Hugh Hefner had the most prestigious club in the world because of his book. When I worked there, it wasn't but one Playboy club in the whole world. But people came in from all over the world because it was a status symbol. To have a key to the Playboy club is like having a Mercedes now. And people came in from all over. I mean, it become a tourist attraction for Chicago. And so uh, when I get called down there, they say $50 for that one night. So I'm thinking, if I was working seven nights a week, had no idea I would be one day. I say it's 50 I didn't know it was that much money in the world. $50 a night times seven. So I go down there. And I'm not thinking of anything. I didn't know at the time that a Negro is not permitted to work a white nightclub. That's in all of America. And I remember not knowing that. I used to practice, what do you do when some white person yell something negative out or embarrass you? And so I used to practice with my wife, but it didn't work because she was too nice and kind. And then one day I did something and she said something to me and I heard that tone. I said, that's the tone I want. That's the tone. And then one night, I don't know how I got this little job in this little hick town. Look, Mission Walker, Indiana. So I, that, just, you don't have to say no more. So I'm in Mission Walker, Indiana. This little honky tonk tapping. And, and somebody said, get that nigga off the stage. Now, quickly I knew I have a fine mind. I don't have to be validated by white folks. And I say that at a time when most black folks did. These are your customers. The same people that go to the, the Chez Paris and to the, the big show in Vegas. This is their Vegas. This is all they know. They go there for their birthday. They go there when the friends come into town. And so these white folks there are your clients. You make your money on them. You ain't making a nickel on me because you paying me. And whatever I drink, you're not charging me. So what happens, and I figured this out for a while, what happens if you who bring me in, somebody, and calls me a nigger, and the rest of your customers get upset or maybe even start a fight? Then that was really saying you was better off not bringing me in. Because I'm not going to be there. They said. So I was ready for it. And everybody just froze. And I said, yeah, yeah, white boy, call me, call me. I'll range his horse, call me trigger. And everybody laughed. And after they laughed, and I said, come on, y'all be crazy. You know he called me a nigger. But my contract says whenever I hear the word nigga in here, I got to get $50 every time I hear it. So would y'all just stand up and say, nigga, 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 nigga. I'm out of it. There's no way you can feel sorry for me or embarrassed and laugh. So now I got him back. Now I'm off. You know, and the guy walk up and say, Whew, thank you. Jesus Christ. I wanted to hit him myself. And then the guy walks up and says, he's sorry. Man, they're sorry. I don't almost pay you, man. I've been, I've been trying to figure out how to get to this. So now I'm back at half one night. I have no money, and I don't know that white folk don't pay you that night. You know, you get paid through your agent. So I didn't even have car fare back. So I, I get on the bus, and I get off at the wrong stop, and it's a blizzard. And I look at my watch, and it's quarter to eight. And uh, I, I, I meant to be at his place at 7.30, but because of the blizzard and everything. And I got my suit and my a little bag over my arm and my shoes. And I'm running. And I'm asking everybody, do you know where the Playboy Club is? And they say, you go down there. And about eight blocks away in the blizzard, I see this huge sign that says Playboy. And I'm praying, thank God. And I'm running and I'm slipping and I'm sliding. And I run up on stage, the first time I didn't get to put my outfit on. And I started talking. And uh, he had, so 
I had to think where those people were from. Alabama. You know, see, I spent 20 years down there one day, and they just go crazy. You can just hear the laugh, the, the giggling. I mean, you can go past laughing and get the giggling. Man, that's when you're cooking. I, I was cooking so good that night, I wish I was sitting out there listening to me. And you could just feel it, and they was yelling out, I'm from so-and-so, Mississippi. I'm from so-and-so. And so I said, oh, I was in Mississippi. And uh, I sit in a restaurant for five days, only to find out they didn't have nothing on the menu I liked. And then another guy yelled out. I said, oh, yeah, I was in uh, Bluxy, Mississippi. I said, I was there and uh, walked into the restaurant. And the uh, white waitress said, yeah, can I help you? And I looked at him and I said, I like a whole fried chicken. And then I said, and she left, and, and, and these three boys walk in, Ku Klux and Klan, and they went off. It's probably Klansmen in the audience, right? And they said, nigga. She brought the chicken. I said, nigga. What are you doing in this restaurant? Come in to eat. Well, whatever you do to that chicken, we're going to do to you. And so, in fact, it was a whole chicken, so I said, I just parted it and kissed this butt and say, line up. And they just went off the, the hook. And at 12 o'clock, I'm still on the stage, midnight. And at 12.15, Hugh Hefner came in. They woke him up. And uh, about 1.30, I walked off. And everybody, the lights came on, you thought, Jesus had came down and kissed Christians. They loved it. They just, you know. I was honest. I wasn't disrespectful. I wasn't mean. I wasn't bitter. And from that, Hefner brought me back for two weeks. That was the first time in the history that a Negro comedian had been booked in a white nightclub. 